This video is for students who are enrolled in CS222 at Ball State University. This is Paul Gestwicki, and I'm happy to welcome you to this exciting and challenging course. In this video, I'll show you how to make your first Java project for the course, and this will help you learn some of the technology that will let you hit the ground running. So, make sure you download the Community Edition of IntelliJ IDEA and install that into your operating system. And when you run it, you'll get an interface that looks something like this. I'm going to go ahead and create a new project. and uh, I want to make it a Gradle project. We'll be using Gradle pretty much all semester. Up here you can see that my project SDK is already set for the defaults on my system. If you needed to install a different one, you could always click on the Download JDK button there. Otherwise, the defaults here are fine. And I'll call this Hello World. So here's the main IntelliJ IDEA window. Uh, it'll take a moment for the Gradle subsystem to, to spin up, and uh, if you've never used Gradle before, it'll take a little longer even than you're seeing here, probably. The first file we're looking at is a Gradle configuration file, but for our purposes we can just kind of ignore that for now. The important thing to know is that what Gradle gives us is a nice project structure for our Java projects. So right off the bat, for example, we can see we have a source folder that contains two subfolders, main and test. The idea here is that all of our testing code goes in the test folder and all of our production code goes in the main folder. This is important because we'll be using a technique this semester called test-driven development. One of the main ideas of test-driven development is that before we write any production code, we write test code. And what that does is tell us what it would mean for the production code to be correct. That is, we sort of write our specifications as tests and then write the other production code to satisfy those tests. Let's see what that looks like. There's a folder here called Java, which is where the Java code will go. And we'll start by right-clicking and saying new package. Oops. There we go. Um, now, we could just use the default package, but that's a pretty bad practice in Java, and so it's good for us to create our own package. So I'm using edu.bsu.cs222. Now, inside of here, I'll make a new Java class. Again, I just right-click down there, and I'll call this greeter test. And I'm calling it that because this will be the test code for a class I'll create later called greeter. I'll put in the test annotation here, and notice the IDE very helpfully uh, gives me this pop-up. So if I press enter, it will automatically bring in that import for me. That's really convenient. And the signature for this will be public void test say hello. Now that name might look a little strange to you, but you'll get used to it. The word test tells us that this is a test method, and then this tells us what the name of the method is that we're going to test. We're going to test a method called say hello, which doesn't exist yet. Um, Let's go ahead and sketch out how we want this to work. So if we had a class called greeter, we could instantiate it like this. Then we could call the say hello method on it. And uh, let's assume that that's going to return to us the message that we expect. So we can assign that into a variable called result. Now, part of this testing system we're using, which is called JUnit, uh, is a class called assertions that we'll be using a lot. And we can say assertions, uh, once again, enter to get the automatic import there, uh, dot assert equals. See here that there's a whole family of these assert equals methods. They all have the same structure, though. They all have the expected value followed by the actual value. So let's say my expected value here is hello. And the actual value is, well, whatever I got out of calling greeter.sayhello. Now, as I typed it in, notice that something curious happened. The IDE stuck in this word expected there, but it's not actually part of the code. Right? Java doesn't have a way to name parameters like this. So this is the IDE trying to be helpful. However, I put it to you that this is not helpful. This is something like a crutch, and I really don't like it there because it's not code. When I, when I look at a program, I want to see just the program and not things in it that are not code. Uh, if nothing else, it's eating up precious horizontal space, which I don't want to waste on this kind of stuff. Well, fortunately, it's really easy to get rid of those, and I recommend you do this uh, really as soon as you start using this IDE. As you right-click on here and just say, uh, disable hints is one way you can turn it off. 
Um, you can also go to the hints settings and just turn off parameter hints. There. Now what we're looking at is just the code itself. Much cleaner, much tighter, and we won't fall into bad habits of writing code that assumes we can see those parameters when we actually can't because they're not part of the code. Okay, so let's get back to this issue where we are writing this test for a class that doesn't exist. Well, let's go ahead and make the class exist. Uh, first, I'll show you sort of the laborious way. We can go to the uh, main folder and the Java folder within, and we can say new package, uh, use the same pa package name here, and then we can say make a new class called greeter. And there we go. So that's enough that if we go back to the greeter test, right, this now compiles, of course, because that class exists. Um, let me show you another way to do that. So let me just back out here from where I was. We'll just delete that. Yep, and I just uh, pressed the delete key to delete it. Um, yeah, so it's giving us a, a warning that it's not safe to delete because we have references to it, but that's okay. We'll delete it anyway, and I'll even delete that package. Okay. Back here in the test, uh, one of your best friends when you're using IntelliJ IDEA is Alt-Enter. So I'm going to hit Alt-Enter here, and one of the options it gives me is, do I want to create that class? Well, well, yes, yes I do. So I'll just press Enter again. Now, one thing to watch out for is that by default, it's going to want to put that uh, greeter class in the same folder as we're currently working, which is the, the test folder. Um, but greeter is not a test class, it's, it's production code. So I'll just click on the ellipsis there and tell it I want to put this in the main folder. Okay, there we are. So same result over here, um, much uh, many fewer clicks and less typing. So that's nice, um, which means you know we can focus on the problem instead of trying to work around the tool. Now, uh, in a similar way, uh, we say here on line 11 that we want to have a say hello method on the greeter class. And we could then, you know, click over here and type in public string say hello. Uh, but again, we can just click on there and say alt enter. And uh, the first option it gives us is to create that method. So let's do that. Good. Now, there's a little uh, trick here when doing TDD that I'm going to use right off the bat, which is um, sometimes it can be helpful to have the test fail first. So I'm just going to return um, empty string. Actually, let's just return null. That's fine. Uh, this is, <laughs> I'm using this as an example because it's really a bad idea, but it'll show us how the test fails. So we'll go back over here, and we have a couple of options for running these tests. Um, we can click on these buttons over here. I happen to like right-clicking over here and saying, run tests in hello world, um, because that doesn't just run them in one file, right? This would run them for greeter test. This would run just that test. This runs all the tests in the whole project. Now, admittedly for us, it's just that one test, um, but it's a good habit to have. Notice that after the first time we do that too, we get a test configuration up here. So we can repeat the tests just by clicking up there now. Okay, um, we can see that this test failed. In fact, now by clicking on that, we can see that it expected hello, but it was null. Let me show you one other helpful thing we can do here. All of these uh, assert methods have an optional third parameter, which is a uh, message that will show if the test fails. Um, so we can sort of make line 12 here a little bit more self-documenting by saying what we expect here. Um, so let's try that. And then rerun the tests. and click on the failing one. And here, this is pretty neat. That's that same message, right? So we see uh, what was expected and what was actually re returned along with that little uh, string description that we put in there. So that's neat. Okay, so let's go ahead and write enough code to make this pass. We'll go to the greeter. We'll change this to hello and rerun the tests. That's it. We can see in the test results that everything passed. Now, if you wanted to see the actual passing tests, you can use some of the filters up here to show, uh, right, this one is to show the past tests. This one's to show the ignored tests. So feel free to fiddle with those depending on what your current needs are. Um, but that's enough for this video. Hopefully that's enough to get you started. Go ahead and try this yourselves. Happy programming.